In this video, we're going to talk about customizing the grid using your own components. The list we can see here is all the parts of the grid that you can put your own component in. For example, you can customize a cell, you can customize an editor, you can customize a filter, etc, etc, etc. We're going to have a top level look at how to get your components into the grid. And when I say top level, I mean generally speaking. So this information will be applicable regardless of whether you're trying to customize a cell, provide your own filter, customize a header, etc. To help, I'm going to use this application over here. It's a simple HG grid application. You can see we've got some row data, some column definitions. We're pulling some data from the server. And here is the AG grid component. Clicking on this tab here, I can see the application running on the right-hand side. I'll create a new file for my components. I'll call it comps.js. And then inside the new file, a very basic React functional component called hello world. I'm now importing the new component into the app and I'm going to use it as a cell renderer for the athlete column, as a filter for the age column, and as a header component for the country column. Let's take a look at what just happened. Inside the comp.js, I've got a simple component called hello world. All it does is print hello world. Then inside the main app, I'm using it as the cell renderer in athlete. That means in the athlete column, all the cells here are just printing hello world. I'm also using the same comp as a filter here for the age column. If I open up the filter here, you can see it prints hello world. And then on the country column, I'm using the same component as the header. And here we can see the country column no longer says country, it says hello world. Now the hello world comp isn't very useful here in the cells. It's not showing me the cell values here in age, the filter, it's not doing any filtering. How to get the components to be useful in these scenarios is the topic of a different video about cell renderers or about filters. Here we're looking at how the components are configured, which is common across all the filter types. Now each component that you provide will be treated as a standard React component. That means that it will get React props. What's in the props depends on where the component is being used. So let's print these props and take a look. It's being printed every time a render cycle will happen for my component. So here are all these print objects here are corresponding to every time it's been used inside a cell. If I open up here, I can see a bunch of stuff that's provided to us by the grid inside the props. Let me open up the age filter here. I can see it's printed hello world. And then down here, I know that these are the props for filtering, which are a bit different to the props for cells. So these are the cell renderer props. And then here, these are the filter props. So what I'm saying is each component type gets a different set of props here. The cell renderer, you can see it gets a value that's specific to cell renderers. The filter gets a different set of props. If you want to see what props are applicable to each component type, check the documentation. Let's close this down and take this print statement away. So we've seen there that the grid gives us props and what's in the props is different depending on whether we're a cell renderer, a filter, a header comp, etc. Additionally, the grid allows us to supplement the props with our own custom properties like this. The component is now saying hello and then the value of what's inside the name prop. Now let's give the name prop some values. So what I've added in here on the athlete column is this bit. I've provided cell renderer params and inside the params I've given it key value pairs of name is Tom. And that's why it says now hello Tom for all the different cells. Likewise for the age column, I've added in this here, which means then on the filter for age, I'll see hello Dick. And then finally for the header for a country, it says hello Harry. Right, there's a pattern here. Let me write this text here to help explain. So each component follows this pattern. You've got three properties, the component, the params, and the selector. The name of each property is identical, except params has the word params at the end, and the selector has the word selector at the end. So if you see here, cell renderer, it's then cell renderer params. Similarly for filter, you then have filter params, and for header component, you have header component params. It doesn't matter what the component is, if you want to provide params, just have another property with the word params at the end. Now we've also got this thing here called the selector. Let me just code something up really quickly to show that. I'm creating another comp called goodbye comp, and then I'm going to use a cell renderer selector to choose between the two comps. Okay, so inside the comps.js, I've now got two components. The first one says hello and the name, and then the second one says goodbye and then the name. Then inside the main application for the cell renderer, I have provided a cell renderer selector that's instead of a cell renderer, and the cell renderer selector picks between the two component types randomly. I can then see here on the right hand side, sometimes it says hello and sometimes it says goodbye. For details on what's happening inside the selector, then that's explained inside my video on cell renderers. What I wanted to explain here was the pattern between the property names, whereby we've got the component, the params, and the selector. 
that is cell renderer, cell renderer params and cell renderer selector, which is consistent with the pattern I've defined up here. And again, this pattern is common across all component types. So for a cell editor, for example, you would have cell editor, cell editor params and cell editor selector. And a cell editor selector will be used to have a different cell editor for different rows. And then if you want to see explicitly what all these properties are and go to our docs and go to the registering components page and you'll see this table here where we explicitly set out all the different properties for the different component types. Now you might notice that selector is only documented for cell renderers and cell editors. It's not documented for the other component types. That's because we think it only really makes sense for cell editors and cell renderers to use a selector. Now let's go back to the code. These two components we've created are React functional components. It's also possible to use React class components and it's possible to use plain JavaScript components. That means not using React. I just need a few more seconds to finish this coding and we're done. So we now have three components. This one here is a React functional component. This one here is a React class component. And this one here is a plain JavaScript component. It's not using React. So we've got hello comp, goodbye comp and greet JS comp. Then in my app, I can see we're using all three. So hello comp and goodbye comp as before. And then greet JS comp is used as the header component for the country field. We can see then in our application, greet JS Harry is up at the top here and we have hello Tom and goodbye Tom. So the grid can work with these three component types at the same time. You can mix and match and use React functional, React class based or plain JavaScript based. And that's true for all the different component types in the grid, whether it be cell renderer, cell editor, filter, header comp, etc. Okay, looking back at our three types again, you're probably with me with these two, with React functional and React class based. That's probably what you're using in your application. But this one here, the JavaScript one, you probably have two questions. One is, what the hell is that? And the second one is, well, when would you use it? So the first question, what is a JavaScript component? Well, you see, AG Grid works with all the different frameworks and it also works when there's no framework. So that means it's got the capability inside to use a component that's not tied to any framework at all. And that's what this is. It's a component that's not tied to any framework. To see how to write such a component, go to our documentation and go to the page for the component that you want. For example, here I'm looking at Cell Renderer and I have React selected. If I then select JavaScript, it'll explain how to write a component using JavaScript. And this is what I've done here. So that answers what a JavaScript component is, but then you might be asking, why would you want to do this? If I'm writing my application in React, why would I want a JavaScript component? One scenario where this is useful is if you have a component you want to share across projects and not all of those projects are using React. But providing the component in JavaScript, it can be consumed by any project that uses AG Grid, even if it's not a React project. This is common in large organizations where there's a mix of projects using a mix of frameworks. Okay, moving on to the next topic, which is registering components. First, a quick breather. Whew. Okay, now I'm going to write some code and then explain. So what I did is I created a map here of component names to components. So AAA is mapped to hello comp and BBB is mapped to goodbye comp. Then this components map is given to the grid using the components grid property. To show this working, I'll put a cell renderer onto the age column using my clipboard. We can see here that the cell renderer is provided with the string AAA. When it is a string, the grid knows to look it up. And here we can see that AAA is mapped to hello comp. And that's why hello is being used underneath the age column. It says hello Mick. If we were to change it here to be BBB, it now changes to goodbye Mick because BBB is mapped to the goodbye comp. You have the choice when specifying your components. You can reference them directly or you can reference them by name. Most of the time you will reference them directly. This is what we do in all of our documentation examples. It requires less code and also the compiler will pick up if components are missing. Referencing by name has the advantage that it allows your grid definitions, for example, your column definitions, to be converted to JSON. This can be useful for reporting applications using AG Grid to want to define and save report definitions. The grid comes with a bunch of components already registered. To see what they are, go to the documentation and in the components section, there's a page registering components. And in that page, you'll see this list. It's all of the components that the grid provides. For example, here, I can see all of the filter components that come provided with the grid. Let me just copy this into my clipboard and then back with our code. Remember the age column here has hello Dick for the filter. 
if I go to where that's configured, and instead of providing my comp hello dick, I'll provide a string. Number column filter popped out of my clipboard, and then I can see here, hello dick is gone, and number column filter is here instead. So you pick from the provided filters using the filter name as the component. That's explained in the video we did on filtering. Okay, now I'm gonna step back a bit. I'm gonna tidy this code up here. I'm gonna stop using the selector and just specify the cell renderer just to make the code more tidy for the next piece. I'm going to configure some more component types just to show you them. So in the athlete column here, for example, I'm gonna make it editable and then I'm gonna specify a cell editor component. I'm gonna use the goodbye comp. So here now in our application, if I double click on one of the cells here, goodbye pops up. That's the editor component. I'll press escape to cancel the editing. And just like specifying components anywhere in the grid, this can be a React functional component, a React class component, a JavaScript component, or it could have been a string whereby the grid would then look it up here in the registered components. And again, for this video, the editing component doesn't actually do any editing. It doesn't do anything. That's because in this video, I'm only looking at the configuration of these components. Next up, I'll show you floating filter. I'll put that onto the age. First, enable floating filter to true. Then I'll set the floating filter components to hello comp. And then for the floating filter component params, I'll pass in the name George. So here's the new code here. And then on the right hand side underneath age, I can see hello George at the top where the floating filter would go. So far in this video, we've only seen components configured on the column definitions. Let's look now at some components which are configured at the grid level using grid properties. To help, where we're setting row data here, we're going to instead set an empty list. Now the grid is going to show no rows to show. This is called the no rows overlay, and we can provide a component to show instead of this little text message here. We provide the component using the no rows overlay component grid property, and then we can provide params using a property of the same name followed by params. So here's our new code, and you can see then that the overlay is now saying, hello, Susan. Actually, let's call her Susan no rows. It might make a bit more sense. There we go. So this is the no rows overlay. This gets displayed when an empty list is given to the grid. Now, if no list is given to the grid, which we can do here by commenting this whole section out, then the loading overlay appears. And again, we can customize this. That's done with the grid property loading overlay component, and also we can use loading overlay component params. So here's the new code. And then here I can see goodbye Rachel loading as the loading overlay. Now there are two more components I want to showcase in this video before finishing up, and they are only available in AG Grid Enterprise. So I'm npm installing AG Grid Enterprise. I'm now going to import AG Grid Enterprise into my app and restart our server. Okay, the first enterprise component I want to show you is how to put status panels into the status bar, and that's done by configuring the status bar grid property. I just popped this out of the clipboard. Now don't get too stuck up on the actual configuration here. All I'm trying to show is how to hook up the components. And here you can see I've got two status panels. One is using the hello component with Peter and one is using the goodbye component with Paul. And then in my grid, if you look at the very bottom right, it's quite subtle, but here you can see hello Peter and goodbye Paul. They are two status panels inside the status bar. The last enterprise component I want to show you are tool panels. Let me just paste this code in here. This is the new code here. Again, don't get bogged down in the details. I'm just trying to show you how the components are configured. This sidebar here is a grid property. The sidebar defines what is displayed on the right hand side here. Here I can see there's three tabs. The tool panels here, there's one for each tab. I've got columns, custom one and custom two, which is what I can see here on the right hand side columns, custom one, and custom two. When I click on columns, I see the grid provided columns tool panel. And that's what this is doing here. This is the comp and I'm providing a string, which the grid then looks up. And this is the grid provided columns tool panel. Then for the other two tabs, I'm using the custom components, hello comp here and summer and goodbye comp here with winter. And then here, if I click on custom one, I'll see hello summer and custom two Goodbye, winter. Now there's far more to know about tool panels, just like there's far more to know about status panels and status bars and every other component type that I went through here. There's lots to learn, but that's all for other videos. What I went through in this video was how to configure them into the grid. And all of the different component types have similar properties when it comes to configuration. They can all take React functional components, React class components, or just plain JavaScript components. He can also provide additional props to the components using params, and in this video we demonstrated that by providing the name property. We also saw that you can reference the components directly, or you can register the components with the grid, and then reference them by name. Right, that's it. This video is 
complete. And I need to go now. I've got to play some PlayStation 5. You see, I bought this new game called Elden Ring, and I'm a Dark Souls fanboy. I really got to play it. Thank <music> you.